I'm recording. I don't know. I don't know if I have my, um... I'm just going to show this video, and then I'm going to stand it up. Let's see, let's do this. Why is my camera lens getting broken? My camera lens keeps flicking around, so I can't focus on the train. Chattanooga and St. Louis Rally number 710, the NC and St. Al 710 for short. It is the oldest of our operational diesel locomotives, having been built in 1955 General Motors Electromotive Division, or EMD, for the National Chattanooga and St. Louis, which was a railroad that did run through Chattanooga, hence the name, although it did not go to St. Louis, which is weird how they named it that. But the, uh, anyway, this locomotive was built as a model GP7, producing 1500 horsepower. GP meaning general purpose. It could be used on any service, freight, passenger, and switching service, for example. It would later see service with a successor, Louisville and National Railroad. It would be retired, though, following a head-on collision that suffered in Birmingham. After that, Amtrak would purchase a locomotive, and they would repair it, and then upgrade it to a GP9, meaning its prime mover was replaced, and its power output increased to 1,750 horsepower. And they would use it in maintenance of waste service. And then after Amtrak retired it, we have tried it here from the museum, restored it back to operating condition as well as to its original appearance, and we've been using it here ever since. Now if you have a look up at the cab here, you'll see our engineer Joseph. He's responsible for operating the locomotive and getting us here and back safely today. So everyone go ahead and give him a wave. Now while these are commonly referred to as a diesel locomotive, the correct term for these engines is actually diesel electric. Meaning inside this engine, there's a large 16-cylinder diesel engine turning a generator. That generator boosts electricity, which is then fed down to the electric traction motors that sit on each axle of this locomotive. And it's those electric traction motors that are actually propelling the locomotive. Hence why they call diesel electrics. Or, uh, you can think of them as a hybrid of sorts. Now diesel locomotives have always made that way, and that's the way they're still made today. The major difference between the locomotives built in 1950 and the ones being made today is that the modern engines have computer systems in them that produce much more power, they're much more fuel efficient, and the modern ones run on alternating current rather than direct current like this one. 
Now the reason why these locomotives were going to replace the steam locomotive was for nothing but money. The steam locomotives were just much more expensive all around to operate. So when you factor in things such as crew labor costs, maintenance, repair costs, fuel and water costs, and so on, compared to all that, these are just cheaper to run. So the railroad's purchase of these is nothing more than a cost-cutting measure. Now while our train is still sitting over there by that depot on track number one, we're going to line this locomotive up with track number two, and that's so we can do what's called a runaround. What that means is the locomotive will go past our train on track number two and then do a switch. So do that switch back into track number one to recouple to the opposite end of the train. So what goes in front will become the back and vice versa for the return trip. Now that we have the locomotive lined up for track number two, for those of you like, that would like to see our backstop for our respiration take place, you can follow me. We'll just head right back this direction for the train. Before we get there, we'll take a right turn over that small crossing and head to that bar. Now, if you would like to ever see what the inside of that car looks like, you can go to our website, pdroll.com, and go to our blog.